Hello everyone. So let us continue this series of lecture of PTR and this is the 26 video in that series. In this we will discuss about three very important tables. So stay with me till the end of the video. The first uh, table is on different type of shocks. So we have hypovolemic, distributive, cardiogenic and obstructive shocks. Let us discuss about the physiological changes in these different types of shocks. Okay. So first is preload. In hypovolemic shock, preload decreases. Why? Because puri body may have fluid come in. And, and what is preload? Preload is the amount of blood or fluid which is coming to the heart. Okay. And uh, PCWP is the measure of preload. In distributive shock, preload is decreased or it can be normal. In cardiogenic shock, preload increases. Why? Because heart is not able to pump the blood forward. So preload will increase. In obstructive shock, again, heart is not able to push the blood forward. So again, preload is increased. Okay. Now let us discuss about this cardiac output. In hypovolemic shock, since blood is less, fluid is less, so cardiac output decrease. In distributive shock, what is happening is that puri body mein systemic vasodilation ho gaya. Okay. Now systemic vasodilation ho gaya, so cardiac output increase ho jayega. Okay. So cardiac output will increase or either would remain same. In cardiogenic shock, again cardiac output would decrease because heart is not able to pump the blood. In obstructive shock, again cardiac output would decrease. Now let us discuss about this afterload which is uh, governed by systemic vascular resistance. So, jitna periphery mein vasoconstriction hoga, utta jada afterload badega. Okay. So, definitely hypervolumic shock hai. So, body ka compensation kya hoga? Ki vasoconstriction kar le periphery mein. Okay. So, afterload badega. In distributive shock again kya hoga? Since distributive shock is because of sepsis or anaphylaxis. So, unka basic pathophysiology hai hai ki puri body mein vasodilation ho raha now, vasodilation over the systemic vascular resistance come over after load come over. Cardiogenic shock, systemic vascular resistance, but because the heart is not able to pump the blood, so body will compensate by causing vasoconstriction in the peripheries. Again, obstructive shock, after load or SVR would increase. Now, tissue perfusion, which is governed by this mixed venous saturation, since after load or systemic vascular resistance will increase. Tissue perfusion will decrease because of the vasoconstriction. So tissue perfusion will decrease in all these three types of shocks. While in distributed shock, since systemic vascular resistance is decreasing, tissue perfusion would increase and mixed venous oxygen saturation would increase. But the pathophysiology here is that the cells are not able to use that perfusion because of the sepsis. Okay. So the most important thing to look here is that distributive shock is clearly different from all these three types of shock. Okay. The pathophysiology of distributive shock is increase in the vasodilation. So, systemic vascular resistance will decrease. Okay. So, cardiac output will increase. So, distributive shock means everything is different from all these three types of shock. And there is a question. Okay. And the causes of distributive shock, sir? One is sepsis, another one is anaphylaxis. Okay. Now uh, let us discuss this very important table. So this is CHA2 DS2 VASC score. It is Chadwell score. So when we calculate this Chadwell score in patients with non valvular air. So in patients with non valvular air. We have to calculate this Chadwell score to assess the risk of stroke in these patients and to decide upon when to start the anticoagulation or not. Okay. So C for congestive heart failure or LV dysfunction score of 1. H for hypertension score of 1. H more than 75 score of 2. That's why we have A2. And we have D for diabetes score of 1. S2 for stroke, DIA or thromboembolism score of 2. V for vascular disease is score of 1. A for if age is between 65 to 74, score of 1. S for sex, that is female, score of 1. So maximum score here is 9. Now you have to tell me in the comment section ki kiss score pe we have to start the anticoagulation. Okay. Now uh, this is the third table and this is the ABCD2 score. 
So first of all, when to calculate this score? In a patient of TIA, we have to calculate ABCD2 score to assess the risk of developing stroke in these patients. Okay. And this is to assess the short term risk. So if TIA ka patient aya, abhi to the patient has improved within 24 hours. Okay. Now now the TIA ka patient improved, ho gaya, but now the patient will ask me, how much a stroke hone ke chance is there? So we have to calculate this ABCD2 score and on the basis of this score, we have to decide whether to start the patient on single antiplatelet or dual antiplatelet. Right. So A for age more than 60, score of 1. In Chadwes, age more than 75 has a score of 2, 65 to 74 has a score of 1. But here age more than 60 has a score of 1. This is the important thing to differentiate then blood pressure systolic more than 140 diastolic more than 90 has a score of 1 c for clinical features that is unilateral weakness has a score of 2 which is more suggestive of stroke kind of tia while speech impairment without weakness has a score of 1 d for duration and d for diabetes again so duration more than 60 score of 2 10 to 59 minutes score of 1 and diabetes or on medication or on insulin score of one the total score here is seven okay with zero to three of a low risk four to five moderate risk and six seven high risk of developing stroke okay all the best guys just try to remember these tables because these are very important tables and these are very very volatile and definitely definitely questions are asked were asked and will be asked on these topics. Okay.